Hi there. Redanian Intelligence reported this past weekend that pre-production on House of the Dragon Season 2 has officially begun, which means that they're sending out casting sheets, which is great because this is the start of the process where when casting sheets come out, we get hints of what's going to be in the upcoming season. Now, some plot lines and characters are obviously going to be in there. Other times we're really excited that, wow, we didn't know if they cut that character or not. Now, this isn't just a wild rumor. Redanian Intelligence has been very reliable. They're an established fan site for the Witcher franchise. They were really helpful with Season 1 of House of the Dragon going. They have contacts in the casting agencies who tell them we're seeing these casting sheets go around. Now, they announced past weekend, we've heard pre-production is beginning, then a day later, they got the first casting sheet. They put a, another report out that they saw a casting sheet, which is probably for the Assassin's Blood and Cheese, which we knew would be in Season 2. It's prominent enough they need to do that. And then right after that, a day later, uh, someone posted an audition tape for this casting sheet on Vimeo. Now, this happened in Season 1, where we saw audition tapes for the Cargill twins, that when actors post audition tapes to Vimeo, it's because they didn't get the role. So this guy hasn't been cast. That it's, If you do get the role, you wouldn't post your audition. It's to show it off for other things if you're an actor. And auditions usually have placeholder dialogue. that They rarely reflect what they're actually going to say in the episode, so don't, like, scrutinize the dialogue that much. I'll link to Redanian's report on this, because I don't want to get penalized for if they go, oh, I'm posting spoilers, but link is below to Redanian Intelligence's report on this. But within the space of a few days, it's all one combined report. Hey, we heard casting sheets are going to come out, then they got one for Blood and Cheese, and they even saw an audition tape for one of them. Like I said, the point of all this isn't that this is a giant surprise. This is big enough of a plot point they would never cut it, and it happens immediately, really soon after uh, the events of Season 1. So this would be in Season 2. There's no way that this would be in Season 3. The fact that Blood and Cheese are in it isn't news in and of itself. I mean, even writers, uh, staff writer Sarah Hess said in a separate interview a few weeks ago, uh, just briefly, she acknowledged... Yeah, Blood and Cheese is in Season 2, without elaboration. So, so, we knew all of that, but the point is that the three-month news slump this winter, the three-month post-finale news slump, is officially over, and we are now in an entirely new phase of the news cycle. We are officially in pre-production where any day you could wake up and news could pop up on your feed that, hey, casting sheets are going out for something. So this helps fuel the online community. We have things to discuss now. That tomorrow I could wake up and see Redanian or something on Instagram going, there's this casting sheet going around that looks like Nettles or sounds like Ali Blackwood or, or sounds like Dayron Targaryen or something. So the news cycle has officially started up again, and this is very exciting, is that there was nothing this winter that the, the early December convention they had didn't really have news at it. I mean, it was a good convention to, to discussing things with the actors. It was, the convention is supposed to be a preseason thing. It got delayed due to COVID. We thought there'd be announcements about other projects at it, and there weren't. The one thing to come out of it was that deleted scene with Bela and Rhaenys where Bela had actual dialogue. Other than that, no, because we've switched to a fall release schedule. I said this going in. If it comes out in fall, we're not going to get a full Blu-ray set by Christmas. They can't make a two-month turnaround. Maybe spring to summer we'll get a full set of commentary tracks and stuff. I don't know. We've heard nothing of this so far. But we haven't had anything to discuss over winter break or anything. That for Game of Thrones, this would be like the slump we'd have during the summer, where it would air in spring, finish by May, and we wouldn't get a Blu-ray until Christmas, so that's where we are news-wise. But even then, then they'd be filming reports by the summer. The whole schedule is shifted because it's a fall 
thing. They're not filming, and we didn't get a Blu-ray, so nothing was happening in the winter. The one thing that happened was uh, award show stuff, making a separate video about that. It wasn't really much, but in terms of work on season two, there weren't even that many post-season interviews. We have been asleep for three months. Now, on my end, in case you couldn't tell, I have had a really bad cold for all of January, where I physically couldn't talk. I completely lost my voice, so kind of a good thing that if there had been big news, I couldn't have reported on it. I made a whole bigger schedule video about this. I'm recovered enough that I'm intelligible. But I also had colds in November. It was a whole thing going around, so... Particularly January, I was completely shot, so we haven't gotten anything done the past three months. There wasn't really news coming out, but serendipity that just as my voice has recovered enough I can talk, this past weekend we got the news through a reliable source for gaining intelligence that casting sheets are starting to go out for season two. We're in that phase of production. Remember back in season one? That was so fun, just when... The exciting time of this casting sheet sounds like like such and such a character from season one and picking that apart. We're in that phase now. Moreover, and sorry this is a catch-up video because my voice was shot, not a huge announcement, but you and Mitchell already said that uh, filming would begin in March and tentatively aim to end in November. I've already talked about this. And that going by that schedule, there's no way they could air before July of 2024. But he said, I think we're filming in March. We found through other news channels, found through um, produ production registry websites, that this is confirmed. House of the Dragon Season 2 will officially begin filming on March 6th. And you think, how could it be six weeks away and we're still seeing casting sheets? Well... Some of this is for stuff they're not going to film until fall, because the warm weather stuff, they, if it's anything like season one, season one filmed the warm weather locations in fall, and they spread out their filming schedule, so it's not all going to be in March. And some of these roles they handpicked, and they've explained this, even on Game of Thrones, they said some people auditioned, some were handpicked. And when we saw the main castings for House of the Dragon, remember, like, they announced them in December, but they later said we were cast in October, the lead actors like Rainier, Alice, and Damon. So many of the really top-tier people have probably already been cast. They just didn't tell us about it. Like a, a Brienne or Stannis Season 2 scale character, like Dayron or Nettles, has probably already been cast, and we just, I'm guessing and we just didn't hear about it. What we're seeing now are, like, the third-tier people. This is what happened in Season 1. Like, they're casting the crowds. They're casting guards who have names and speaking lines. That, that level of person. But from that, we can discern what storyline they're in. If it says, like, um, Dayron Squire, we can figure out that, okay, this is what the Dayron storyline is. That, you find the people around these major characters who you would they wouldn't put out casting sheets or some of the really big ones, but we can figure out, oh, this is the person like Stannis's lieutenant would have speaking lines so that we'd see the casting sheet for that and it radiates outward. Like like Blood and Cheese, um in terms of season two, a separate topic here, the issue this touches on uh, we knew this would happen. It's too big to... It, basically, in response to Luke's death, Dayron hires some goons from Flea Bottom to make an assassination attempt on the Greens. Not going to go into detail of how... But he hires assassins to make an attempt on them. And they're called Blood and Cheese because one is a rat catcher who can sneak into the Red Keep like that. And you, you'll see what happens. The real question wasn't whether or not Blood and Cheese would be in Season 2. The, the real question here is, will it be in the first episode or not? Will it be in the premiere? I mean, there's no way they could drag it out until the finale. If I were doing it, I wouldn't do it in the very first episode, because people haven't been watching for, you know, a year and a half by then. That you want to usually spend the first episode or two reorienting everyone, setting up the pieces again, so... 
I would do it in at least the second episode, possibly as late as episode five. That's debatable. But introduce them as like, and we hired these assassins, dun dun dun, at the end of the first episode, then do that in episode two. That's a debate of when do you do it in season two. Uh, from the first through fifth episode or so, I'm not, I don't think it would be as late as episode five, but we'll see how they move that around. It, the wider issue being, and I've talked about this elsewhere and will again, and we'll be debating this for a long time, just how much story will season two cover? Because everyone more or less agreed that the dance over Storm's End, the fight between Amond and Luke's dragons at Storm's End, was probably going to be the end point for Season 1, because it's a good climax, the first dragon versus dragon fight. That it's mostly adapting uh, the Rogue Prince novella, and then like the, the first two chapters of the Dance of the Dragon stuff to get up to, okay, the war has begun, there's this action climax, the first dragon versus dragon fight. That was a pretty clear stopping point. For the rest of the story, what are the big chapter breaks? Like, I can think of, okay, this is a big enough battle, it should be an end. Like, going into Game of Thrones, you could tell there's enough story in Book 3, it'll have to be split in half, and the Red Wedding is a good stopping point, or the Battle of Castle Black is a good point to end Season 4 on. So, major battles and act breaks are probably where you should do. But we'll have fun debating this, of exactly when should they end this. In my mind, I really hope that Season 2 does not rush, but ends with the Battle of Rook's Rest, which, not giving much away, is the next big dragon versus dragon fight. There's other, other battles where dragons are fighting just regular armies, but the next time you have a dragon fighting another dragon is... Battle of Rook's Rest, it's actually a pretty big field battle involving armies and dragons. And the, this is a whole thing that people have been doing since before Season 1. I kept saying, I've read these books, I've scrutinized them, and I'm telling you, there is a lot of material in here, because it's an outline. It seems shorter than it actually is. Like, it just mentions, oh, and this is what Bela and Reyna were like. On paper, that's a paragraph, but you realize I want to expand on that character. So everyone, it was weird for me when people were going, oh, they're going to stretch the material thin if they go more than two seasons. What? Like, looking at this, I was saying, there's like five to seven seasons worth of material in this, depending on when you ended, that they could go into the next pre blur but at least five seasons worth of material in this. And we saw what happened when they rushed it, that while I love season one of this, even George R. R. Martin admitted, we wanted a 13-episode season, and we're actually pushing for that and negotiating for that with HBO, but ultimately they said no. Because, you know, this was a dead franchise. They had no pull anymore. Now that season one is a big success, who knows what'll happen. That I'm hoping They said, we think we can do it in four seasons of ten episodes. I think they were lowballing it because they weren't, you know, mega success yet. They need at least five seasons, or possibly another three seasons, but with 13 episodes each. Depending, if you go, well, they're act breaks, that if they've decided there's four, like a play, there's four acts to the story, well and good, but then those, like, act three will need 13 to 15 episodes to tell it right, and just, like, air it in two parts or something, I don't know. But a 13-episode season is really what we need. And the problem is, it would be hard to expand the final season, by which point the armies are exhausted and a lot of people are dead. It's like going, well, uh, Feast for Crows, if that was the final book, when so many of the armies are already dead and so many characters have died, how would you expand their story? The point where you expand a story, choose to expand it or not, is the middle like, Game of Thrones Season 2, do we introduce the Ironborn or not? Do we introduce... Uh, how much of the Stannis and Renly story do we show? That you have... And Brienne, you have to pick and choose these are storylines are going to sideline or not. Now, they did emphasize Dayron, uh, Allison's fourth and youngest child, he exists in the TV show. We heard rumors that there were dialogue scenes in the finale that where they actually talk about him, that were cut for time. We know a lot, of, a lot of scenes were cut for time from the finale, so I consider that possible. 
Other than that, the, the actors in Martin have said he exists, and he's shown in the title sequence family tree. The one thing is, there is one line of dialogue where, in the finale, Daemon goes, the Greens have four adult dragons. He goes, they have three adults, then he goes, they have four in total. Because Dayron's is a juvenile, and she, she's war-capable, but she's like Vermax's size. Uh, the fact that he said four confirms that Dayron exists, and they said he'll come next season. But for a while there, we were worried, like, will they show the Reach... He's on, he's the POV for the Reach front of the war, in the Reach. Or will they show the Blackwoods? Will they? How, will Nettles be combined with Reyna or not? I really hope not. Uh, that's just a rumor. Uh, that it's a Theory, not, not a rumor. Uh, how much of these characters do you expand? Who do you condense? The time to make those decisions is the early seasons, season two, and they were writing season two just as season one was becoming a success. So I'm hoping that, you know, the writers probably said, we're banking on this being a success, we'll sit down and write a 13-episode season, or write a season knowing it'll be 10 episodes out of a five-season arc, and they just lowballed it to HBO, I don't know. Still, considering the, the, the delayed response, that they were writing this long before they were filming it, when is season two going to end? It should end with the Battle of Rook's Rest, because if that happens mid-season, they're going too fast. They're going too fast that all the big land army wars are in are after the, the Battle of the Lake Shore. There's there's a series of other battles. I've made longer videos about this, and this is supposed to just be an update, that if Rook's Rest ha it happens earlier than episode 9 or 10, they are going way too fast. Then again, maybe they want to introduce the Dragon Seeds, but the point is, the battle after that, this giant sea battle involving dragons, the Battle of the Gullet, I would also think it, it, you could end on that and it wouldn't be too fast, but I would rather they didn't. So we'll see what happens, but a big point of this is Blood and Cheese we knew was coming right away. This is setting up other news reports that are going to come later. The thing we're looking out for is, based on the casting sheets, when exactly does Season 2 end? Case in point for Season 1, when we saw casting sheets for the Baratheon Daughters. We were seeing Boros Baratheon's daughter, we went, okay, the dance at Storm's End is clearly in Season 1. Same thing for this, but for season two of how far along are they going in this? Big question. I mean, just could you tell this story in another 30 episodes? That is, well, four seasons of 10 episodes, one is already done. You could tell the story of Rhaenyra and Alicent in another 30 episodes. But much like season one, it would be stripped down to the point that Bela isn't a character, that Jace isn't really developed that Dayron isn't really a character. And this is what, thankfully, everyone was saying after uh, that deleted scene came out of, wow, Bela didn't have that much to do in season one. She had this big scene going, I am a dragon writer, I want to do this with her grandmother. Cut for time. This is an argument for, and just, I kept saying for season one, this needs to be like 13 episodes, more than this. Oh, yeah, yeah, you just, we're never in danger of stretching it thin. There's too many characters. Martin makes too many characters. You saw the complaint after the time skip was we needed at least one more episode to deal with the aftermath of the wedding before the time skip. Maybe another two to round out these other characters like their children, like Bela didn't, and Raina didn't do that much. Could you do it in 30 for Rainier and Alice? Yeah, but if you want more Bela scenes and, and everyone else, you need more time for that, but that's an open question. Uh, other news coming, I'm sorry, this is a catch-up news report for the past uh, week, past month. Uh, I, I was completely sick, I lost my voice, and like three or four related news things came out all at once. That series of three reports, they're really one thing from Redanian, that the first casting sheets are coming out, it's for Blood and Cheese. Also, that they are officially starting to film on March 6th, though whether we'll get spy photos from that or not, is always luck of the draw in terms of how much are they doing interior or exterior, but 
from for about the next six weeks we're going to be looking at casting sheets going okay this person is clearly in this is like Baratheon daughter or Dayron's lieutenant this is indicating when the storyline is so we have the news cycle has turned on again <laughs> please check back every day we could see a big casting sheet for something else tomorrow blood and cheese I didn't doubt but if we see something like this is clearly the dragon seeds, the Targaryen bastards who claim dragons, that'll be huge. So that's coming. On top of this, and I'll leave off on it, all of this news has started up and we're debating how long it should run. The big behind-the-scenes book, Making of House of the Dragon, it comes out in a few days. That this past weekend we got the first casting sheets. By next weekend, we'll ha I'll have the book in hand. My uh, shipping tracker says I'm going to have it by Friday. Whether that means morning or afternoon, probably afternoon. I'm not, I'm not really sure, and I'm busy this weekend. As soon as I get that thing in hand, I will rush through it to get the, a, a quick reaction of the most important new revelations... But I hate it when people just skim a book. That that will be fueling heavy analysis for like two weeks. But that is the behind-the-scenes info dump that we've been looking forward to. Because, again, due to fall schedule, we didn't get a Blu-ray that was full of commentary tracks and stuff this Christmas. And there wasn't filming news, that there was nothing really going on. That behind-the-scenes book, with no other Blu-ray release on the horizon for... If there was something coming in the next two or three months, we would have heard of it. I hope we get something by summer. That making of book is also coming this Friday. So please like and subscribe. Please comment and share your thoughts. I try to respond to all of them. Just that we, we have turned on again. That This fallow time of hibernation is over. I'm not sick anymore. We're getting casting sheets. This weekend we're going to have a big behind-the-scenes info dump. Everything is starting up again. So how far am I in this? About 20 minutes? Sorry, this, this is a catch-up on... A, this should have been three or four smaller news videos, but I'm a week behind, so I combined it into one big one. Everything is starting up again. So please check back frequently.